In this video, we're going to look at the power rule for differentiation. So when you first start differential calculus, you generally learn the power rule first, and it's probably the rule that you're going to use most often. The power rule is for differentiating polynomial style functions, and then we've got a bunch of other rules that we use for different function types. For example, we use a chain rule for differentiating composite functions, we've got rules for trigonometric functions, and exponential functions and logarithmic functions, a whole bunch of rules that we use for different function types. So the power rule is generally considered the easiest of those rules to use, but I still see a lot of students really struggling to get to grips with the power rule. And it's understandable because it's not actually applying the rule itself that's the problem, it's the format of the function that they're given to differentiate which throws them off. So these functions, as you can see, are all very different from one another but they're all going to ultimately be differentiated using the power rule. The challenge though is how do I get something that looks like that or that or that, which is, you know, these are very different looking functions into a consistent format, the format that I need to get them into to then apply the power rule. And what that really comes down to is nothing to do with differentiation or applying the rule. It comes down to exponent rules or indices rules. How do I manipulate this to put it into the correct format? And that's what I want to focus on in this class because the power rule itself is actually quite straightforward to apply if things are in the correct format, which they're usually not. So let's just start by considering what is the, the perfect format for the power rule? What is the expected format of the terms? Well, the expected format of the terms to use a power rule is ax to the n, where the a and the n are numbers, real numbers, but not necessarily whole numbers. Quite often they are whole numbers, but sometimes they're fractions or even decimal numbers, but usually whole numbers or fractions. If you've got the terms in your function in this format, then you can just directly apply the power rule. And the power rule just says multiply by the power and then reduce the power by one. So in this general form, ax to the n, our derivative, f prime of x, would just be n times a, so multiply the power in front, x, remember, is our variable, and then reduce the power by 1, so it goes down to n minus 1. So to take an actual example there, which is in the sort of ideal or perfect format, let's say we want to differentiate the function 3x to the power of 4. So that matches up with the format here, and as you can see, it looks nothing like these more complex forms over here. How would we differentiate this? Well, it's in the correct format, so we just go ahead and use the rule, multiply by the power, so 3 times 4 is 12, take one off the power and we end up with 12x cubed. And remember that the power rule, in fact all of the differentiation rules, they don't, they're not influenced by whether your function is given as f of x or y. So let's just work another example. So if we had a y function, y equals say minus 4x to the power of minus 3, Okay, so it's still in the correct format, even though our a value, the number in front, and our power, the n value, are negative numbers. This is fine to differentiate. Because it's written as y equals, we're going to use the notation dy dx for our derivative. And we just go straight into using the rule again, because we've got no manipulation to do. This is in the correct format, so it's good to go. Minus 4 times minus 3 is positive 12. x is our variable, so we just leave the x. Take 1 off the power, which means it goes down to a negative 4. So that's just two quick examples of using the power rule when they're in this ideal perfect ax to the power of n format. And sometimes you will get those and those are fine. When you're starting out, that's mostly what your functions are going to look like. But pretty soon they're going to start to turn into these monstrous looking things here, which are not in the correct format. So if I look at this guy here, I just cannot differentiate that because it's not in the format to use the power rule. So let's take a look at these examples, which are all fairly common scenarios which students struggle with. And what we need to do here is to take one or more, sometimes several actually, lines of working to get this original function into a form that looks like ax to the n, roughly. Remember, in the a and n can be fractions. Once it's in that format, then we can apply the power rule. So this guy here, really, really common, the square root of x, how do we differentiate that? Well, remembering, hopefully, casting your mind back to your exponent rules, a square root is the same as a one-half power. So the square root of x is just actually x to the power of one-half. That now is in the correct format because we've basically got a number times our x with a power on it. The power is obviously one-half. The number in front, if you like, is just a one. 
So it is in the correct format, so now we can differentiate it. So this is a really good one to remember. It comes up everywhere, it's all over the place. So just try and remember that one off the top of your head. Square root is the same as a one half power. When you differentiate that, we just use the power rule. So we're gonna multiply the power in front. Doesn't matter that it's a fraction. We just do the same thing. So the half comes in front. X, take one off the power. So we're taking one off of one half. So that's gonna go into the negatives. That's gonna be negative one half. So basically one half minus one is negative one half. Sometimes we prefer to write these with positive powers. If you wanna do that, um, which is quite a good practice, and you've got to think about your exponent rules again, and your teacher might encourage you to do that. So the way you would do that in this case is you're basically bringing this to the bottom of a fraction to make it a positive power, so it becomes one over two x to the power of positive one half. And then that x to the half could be rewritten with a square root if you wish to put it back into that square root form. But the important thing we're focusing on here is really how to get from the non-differentiable form to the differentiable form. Okay, let's move on. So another common type is when you've got x raised to some power under some kind of root. So here we've got the cube root of x squared. So again, it's nothing really to do with differentiation at this point. It's to do with casting your mind back to exponent rules. So how do we manipulate this? Well, a cube root is the same as a one third power. So if it was just x being cube rooted, that would be the same as x to the power of one third. Just like we did up here, you could almost imagine there being a little two here in your square root, which we just tend to drop. But we don't quite have that. We've already got a two in there, an x squared. So that one third power just gets applied along with that squared and it becomes x to the power of two thirds like this. That's a really common format, some kind of root with some kind of x with a power on it. Now this is in the correct format to use the power rule, so we can just go ahead and differentiate. So f prime of x multiplied by the power, so the power comes in front, x stays as x. Taking one off the power, so we're taking one off of two thirds. These fractional powers can be a little tricky to work with. Just imagine taking away that one is three over three, so you've got two over three minus three over three, which is minus one over three. And I'm just gonna leave that one like that. But again, you could put it back into this format. In fact, you know what, let's put it back into that format. So that would end up being, because I think that's a really useful thing for you guys to know, because you probably will be expected to rewrite these with positive powers. So that would become two over three x to the power of positive one third. So if, you, if your x term ends up with a negative power, you're gonna to wanna to probably turn it back into a positive power, which you do by putting on the bottom of a fraction and changing the power from a negative to a positive. And that's just another one of the exponent rules. Okay, what about this guy here? Slightly different scenario. We don't have any roots going on. Problem here is that the x term is on the bottom of a fraction and there's no fraction in our general form. So, so that's not allowed. But again, just using one of your exponent rules. In fact, just the opposite of what we did here. Here we brought this term to the bottom of a fraction. This time we're gonna bring it up to the top. If it's an x to the power of four on the bottom, the denominator of the fraction, then on the numerator, on the top of the fraction, it'll be an x to the power of minus four. So that's fairly straightforward. And that just immediately puts that guy into a differentiable form. Then you can just go ahead and make that f prime of x just using the power rule. So minus four comes in front, x to the power of minus five. A slight variation on this that I see students often having a problem with. If there was a number in here, say three was the coefficient of that term, so it's one over three x to the four, when the x term comes up to the top, the three, which is on the denominator, does not move up. But a lot of students do move it up. It stays there, okay? So it's still gonna be like over three at that point. That's differentiable, but it's not explicitly in the correct form. So I would recommend that if you do something like that, pull the denominator number in front to make it a fraction. So one third x to the minus four. That is in a differentiable form, but it's not quite in the correct standard form. So that over three, just make it one third in front. That is now ax to the power of n. So you can then use a the rule. And then that would just differentiate. Um, it would just be sort of the same thing, but you would end up with a, an over three kicking about uh, because it's just a constant term. It would just hang about down there on the bottom of the fraction. Okay, so these are very typical forms. Of course, you'll see variations in terms of the numbers. This could be a power of five or a negative power or anything like that. But the general format of these 
problematic functions is fairly consistent as you work a bunch of differentiation problems. Okay, let's look at some slightly more complex examples that might just need a little bit more work, a little more sorting out to get them in the correct format. So a few things going on here, we've got a square root, we've got a product of functions, and we've also got a fraction. So that implies to me we might need at least three lines of work in three moves to get this into a differentiable format. And don't think that it's always just one move. Here we went straight to differentiable format, the same here and the same here, but sometimes you need multiple lines of work in to get it into a differentiable format. So the first thing I'm going to do here is make this 1 over x times x to the 1 half, so basically changing that square root to a 1 half power. So that's getting in the right direction because we've gotten rid of the square root. This is now a product though. There is a product rule for differentiation, but we're looking only at the power rule in this class. So this is non-differentiable for us. So what we need to do is to continue to manipulate. Remember that x term here is really an x to the power of 1. If you've got a product of x's using your indices or your exponent rules, you add the powers together. So this becomes 1 over x to the 1 plus a half, which is 1 and a half. We're going to write that as 3 over 2. Okay, so it's still not quite in a differentiable form, even though we've already used two exponent rules. But we know how to deal with this now because we saw it down here. We just bring that term up to the top. So that would become, maybe just squeeze it on the end here, that would just become x to the power of minus 3 over 2. And that is now in a differentiable form. This function was written as y, so I'm going to write my derivative using the dy dx notation. Now that it's in the correct format, we just do the same thing. Multiply by the power, reduce the power by 1. So it becomes minus 3 over 2 x. Now we're taking 1 off this power. It's currently minus 3 over 2. Taking that 1 off, think of that 1 as 2 over 2 because you want to match the denominator. So basically you're doing the calculation minus 3 over 2, minus 2 over 2, which will be minus 5 over 2. These fractional powers are not easy when you're starting differentiation. Every time you're taking away that 1, when you're reducing the power by 1, just think of that 1 as whatever fraction it needs to be to match up with the fraction that's already in the question. Okay, so that would be our uh, form there for the derivative. And again, we could manipulate this one to put it back as a positive power, but I'll maybe just leave that for you as a little extra piece of work. Just use the same sort of method that we used in here. Okay, so that's another common form where you've got multiple pieces of working to do using exponent rules before you can even use the power rule. Let's have a look at this one. Slightly different thing again. A few things going on here. First of all, we've got a bracket, which we need to get rid of because that's essentially a product of functions. You've got a function here and a function inside the bracket as a product, kind of like we had here. We need to get rid of that. We've also got this uh, fourth root, which is on the bottom of a fraction. So a little bit ugly, this one. And it's maybe a little bit of personal preference as to how you go about starting the manipulation. So you could do this potentially in a slightly different order. I'm going to start by making this one here into something a little neater. So that fourth root we know becomes a fourth, a one-fourth power in the same way that a square root became a one-half power or a cube root would become a one-third power. That x to the one-fourth power is still on the bottom of that fraction. When you bring it up to the top, it will become an x to the minus one over four power. So I've kind of done a couple of things in one go there. But just check that yourself and see if you agree that that should end up being an x to the minus 1 over 4 power. I've basically used two indices rules, two exponent rules there. I've changed the fourth root into 1 over 4 power. Then I've brought that power, that term, sorry, that x term to the top of the fraction to make it an x to the minus 1 over 4. Still not quite differentiable though because of the bracket and the product. So let's just go one step further by multiplying that out. So x squared times 1 is just x squared. Then we're going to multiply the x squared to the x to the minus 1 over 4. So basically in that scenario, remember, we've got to combine the powers because we're multiplying by adding them together. So let me just kind of find some space to do that calculation. Um, I can maybe just squeeze it on here. So the, pow the powers here are going to be 2, which is this power added to minus 1 over 4. So you might want to make your 2 into something over 4, which would be 8 over 4. 
So it's going to be 8 over 4 minus 1 over 4 because a plus minus is just a minus, which will eventually become 7 over 4. So sometimes with those more, those more complex power combinations, when you're adding them or subtracting them, you might almost need a little bit of side working just to make sure you get that um, correct. So that becomes a power of uh, 7 over 4. Now, a big pitfall to look out for, and I see students doing this all the time, is that if you've done a bunch of exponent work to get to this point, you're almost a bit like, surely the question's done now, I, I can't possibly have more work to do. But remember that at this point we've not actually differentiated, all we've done is a bunch of indices rules, but so many students will now leave this or call this a derivative. But remember that this is not has not been differentiated at this point, so we still need to go ahead and find our dy dx. It should be fairly easy now because we're just using the power rule. Multiply by the power, reduce the power by 1, so that x squared becomes just a 2x, or a 2x to the power of 1, but we would generally drop that one power. And the next term, although it's a fraction, should be okay, so it becomes 7 over 4x, taking away 1, but remember, think of that 1 that you're taking away as being 4 over 4, so you've got 7 over 4 minus 4 over 4, which will be a power of 3 over 4, and that would be the final answer for that one. Okay, let's scoot on and have a go at the final one. So it's just a bit of a combination, this one, of some of the things we've already seen. Sometimes you can do more than one manipulation in one go. So I'm going to change my square root to an x to the one-half power. I'm going to leave the x cubed term, but I'm going to take my x on the fraction up to the top to make it a 2x to the minus 1. So I've used two exponent rules at that point. It's still not differentiable because of the bracket, so we need to multiply the bracket out again like we did up here. So just multiplying the terms together, x to the 1 half um, times x to the power of 3. So you're adding those powers, which will be a power of a half plus 3, 3 and a half, or uh, 7 over 2. So that'll become an x to the 7 over 2 power. Then we've got minus x. So we've got a power here of 1 half minus 1, which will be, a, adding those together, will be a minus 1 half. Okay, so just check my working. So I'm going through those fairly quickly. And some of the... Uh, the fractional calculations are not easy, you've got to be careful with them. This is now in a differentiable form after those sort of three manoeuvres, those three little moves we did to get that in the right format. Now these are both in the form ax to the n, our standard format to use the power rule. So we can go ahead and write up dy dx, so the derivative is equal to 7 over 2x to the power of 7 over 2 minus 1, which is 7 over 2 minus 2 over 2, which is 5 over 2. Once you've done a bunch of differentiation, you'll see a lot of these fractional powers and you'll just start to process them very quickly in your head. This one, we're taking one off of the power. The power is currently minus one half. Taking one off of that is minus one and a half or minus three over two. So that would become negative three over two. And again, we could manipulate that back into a positive power. That's generally good practice. Let's go ahead and do that. So the first term stays as seven over two x to the power of five over two. The next term becomes 1 over x to the power of positive 3 over 2. So just the same term, but on the bottom of the fraction, the powers are positive instead of a negative. The reason why that's important is because later on, once you've kind of mastered using the power rule, you're going to be using derivatives for a bunch of applications. And in those applications, you generally substitute numbers in for x. And if you're subbing a number in to this here, and you want to process that without the use of a calculator, you're going to need to do that using this rule. Otherwise, it's going to be yeah, impossible to process that negative power. Okay, so the power rule itself, yeah, it is very straightforward when you get these very basic forms. The problem is after sort of day one or two in calculus class, you're going to move away from those forms and you're going to start to see all sorts of different combinations of kind of weird looking functions which require more and more manipulation, so one line of working to get it differentiable. The same here, the same here. This one required three lines of working, and that is pretty common, sort of two, three lines of working just to put the function into differentiable form using the power rule, and then you still have to remember to differentiate. Don't forget that step, really, really easy to forget that the whole point is that you're there to differentiate. So I hope that helps. Look out for these forms, learn variations of them, and practice. If you're taking a course in calculus, you're going to do a bunch of differentiation. You don't want to stumble at the first hurdle, which is learning to deal with these tricky forms. 
you want to practice this until the point where you're quite comfortable with it. So I hope that helps. If you've got any questions or comments about this video, please just leave them in the box below.